In this video, we're going to begin looking at chapter four related questions on chemical reactions and aqueous solutions from practice exam 1.2 in the fall 22 semester. All right, so here we are at question 13, which asks us to balance the chemical equation below. And specifically, as many of these canvas problems related to chemical equations do, it's just looking for a coefficient of O2. But let's go ahead and full-blown balance the equation just because we can, and it's a nice uh, example of a balancing problem. So we're going to want to use the smallest whole number coefficients to do this. This is important because any scaling of all of those coefficients is, of course, another valid way to write the chemical equation, and we're going to enter our response as a numeral. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the chemical equation a little bit bigger so that we can move things around and sort of appreciate what's going on here. So we have Si2H3 reacting with O2 to form SiO2 and H2O3. Hmm, some interesting formulas in there, but it is what it is. And let's space things out a little bit so that we have room to add coefficients as we balance this equation. All right, and how to begin? Well, the first thing I would look for here is an element that appears only in one reactant and only in one product. And the first thing that jumps out to me anyway is silicon, which appears in Si2H3 on the reactant side and SiO2 on the product side. The fact that silicon only appears in these two compounds and that it's got a coefficient of 2 or a subscript of 2 on the reactant side and a subscript of 1 implied on the product side tells me that the ratio of Si2H3 to SiO2 has to be 1 to 2, right? I need a 2 over here to account for the two silicon atoms on the left-hand side of the chemical equation. All right, fantastic. Now, hydrogen appears only in Si2H3 on the left and H2O3 on the right. And to make the hydrogens balance, I can see that well, I'm going to need actually two molecules of Si2H3 and three molecules of H2O3. This ensures that I have six hydrogens on the left and six hydrogens on the right. But at the same time, I need to scale the number of SiO2s, right? Because we previously indicated that the ratio of SiO2 to Si2H3 has to remain 2 to 1. So I'm going to scale that up to 4 since I scaled Si2H3 up to 2. So here we're almost done, it seems. We're sitting pretty with respect to hydrogen and silicon, but oxygen remains unbalanced. Now, you could tackle oxygen a couple of different ways. Um, the first thing I would do is count up oxygens on the product side. We've got 2 times 4, that's 8, plus 3 times 3, that's 9. We've got a total of 17 O's on the product side. And that's an odd number, which is annoying because we have O2 on the left-hand side. So you could tackle this a couple of different ways. You could just double the entire equation and then figure out the number of oxygens. It's going to be an even number upon that doubling and figure out the coefficient for O2. But let me show you an alternative approach that is exactly equivalent to that. I've got 17 O on the product side. How do I achieve 17O on the reactant side? Well, that's equivalent to 8.5, let's say moles of O2, right? 8.5 moles of O2 would give me 17 moles of oxygen atoms. This is a valid way to, to go about thinking about it. And now to kind of satisfy what the question is asking for, we can just double everything, right? And get to a balanced chemical equation with only whole number stoichiometric coefficients. So for example, here, we could double this to 4. That 8.5 is going to get doubled up to a nice clean 17. And then we have to remember to do the same to all the other coefficients. So this 4 and 3 are going to get doubled up to an 8 and a 6. And it's worthwhile to just double check that everything's remained balanced. So on the left, for example, we have 8 silicon atoms. And on the right, we have 8 silicon atoms. On the left, we have 12 hydrogens, 4 times 3, highlighted in blue there. And on the right, we have 12 hydrogens, 6 times 2. And as far as oxygen goes, well, we've got 34 oxygen atoms on the left. And we have on the right 16 
due to the SiO2, and 6 times 3, or 18, due to the 6 H2O3s, and if my math checks out, that is indeed 34 oxygens. And so this equation is balanced overall, and specifically the, the coefficient of O2, what the, the problem is looking for here is the 17 that we see right here. That's the answer you would input in the box for this problem. In this problem, we're asked to classify these chemical reactions according to the scheme you see here with six possibilities. Synthesis, combustion, single replacement, precipitation, decomposition, or neutralization. So in each case, let's take a look at the reactants and products, try to visualize what's going on, and see where these fit. So in the first reaction, we've got calcium oxide solid reacting with CO2 gas to form solid calcium carbonate. And that originally said gas, but should have said solid. So let's start by ruling some things out that we know are not involved. Without any O2 around as a reactant, or CO2 or H2O as products, this is clearly not a combustion process. It also doesn't look like single replacement, since there are only, there's only one product, and it doesn't look like anything's being replaced. It looks like two things are coming together, so this is not single replacement. It's also not a precipitation reaction, because we start with a solid reactant, and we end with a solid reactant, so no solid is formed out of a liquid solution, so this is not precipitation. In thinking about decomposition, we think about things falling apart, the number of products being larger than the number of reactant molecules, for example. And that's not what's going on here. In fact, it seems like the opposite is going on here. We're going from two reactants that are quite simple to one somewhat more complicated product. So this is not a decomposition process. And it's also not a neutralization reaction because an acid and a base are not involved. The transfer of a proton is not involved. So it's not neutralization, and that leaves synthesis as the only remaining possibility, and it's worthwhile to verify here why this is a synthesis reaction. We're starting with relatively simple reactants, CaO and CO2, and forming one product that is structurally speaking a little bit more complicated with bigger formula units, so on and so forth. So this is indeed a synthesis reaction. All right, let's move on to reaction two. In reaction two, we have magnesium metal combining with hydrochloric acid, or HCl, to form MgCl2 and H2 as the products, MgCl2 an aqueous solution, and H2 as a gas. So what's going on here? Well, it doesn't really look like synthesis or decomposition, right, because the numbers of reactants and products are the same, two reactants, two products. It's also not neutralization because although we have an acid in hydrochloric acid, there's no obvious base around here. So this is not a neutralization reaction because of the lack of a base. What about precipitation? Well, no solid to be found except on the reactant side. In a sense, magnesium dissolves as the reaction takes place. So this is not a precipitation reaction at all. And it's not combustion because there's, again, no O2 reactant, no CO2 products, no H2O products. So that's not combustion. That leaves only single replacement as the only option. And, and here again, it's worthwhile verifying that this is indeed single replacement. To do that, what we can notice is that the H in HCl is replaced by magnesium in MgCl2 on the product side. So that single replacement is the replacement of H for Mg in the uh, in going from the reactant to the product. So yes, indeed, this is a single replacement process. And if you're familiar with oxidation and reduction, you'll also notice that this is a redox process in which the magnesium has been oxidized and actually the proton inherent in HCl has been reduced. All right, let's look at reaction three. So in reaction three, we have two aqueous solutions coming together. Hmm of ionic compounds, AgNO3 and ZnCl2. And on the product side, we have a solid, AgCl, and an aqueous solution of ZnNO3 2 zinc nitrate, as the products. So what's happening here? Well, visualize it, right? Two aqueous solutions, two liquids are mixed, and most of the liquid remains, but a solid is formed. AgCl solid, a solid salt, comes out of that liquid solution. What kind of reaction type is this? Well, we could go through the rigmarole of ruling out all the other possibilities, or we could recognize that that compound highlighted in orange, that solid that pops out, is called a precipitate, and this is an example of a precipitation 
reaction, classic precipitation in reaction three of silver chloride. And this occurs because silver chloride is an insoluble salt. And so when silver and chloride ions are combined in aqueous solution, out comes a precipitate.